Hello Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, everyone out there. Welcome back to another product review with me, John. And today I'm going to be doing a review of this pizza. It is called the Quest Pizza. And as you can see, this is the thin crust pizza for cheese flavor, mozzarella, provolone, fontina, and romano. So what is interesting about the Quest Pizza? Well, it says, and this is all for a half a pizza. Um, each pizza is two servings. It is about a 10 inch size pizza. And it says that it contains 27 grams of protein, along with six net carbs. Now, when it says net carbs, it's going off of total carbs minus fiber. And there's 18 grams of fiber in this pizza. Um, yeah, it says right here. 24 carbs minus 18 grams of fiber, six net carbs. So how do they make a pizza with only six net carbs? Well, let me read to you the ingredients on this. Water. The second ingredient is mozzarella cheese. So that means that the majority of this pizza is water and cheese. Um, the next ingredient is milk protein isolate. I'm not sure what part of that that is or what it does besides add protein. And then the next ingredient is tomato paste. And you could see on this pizza how much tomato paste is on there. Right. So that means the rest of it is cheese. Um, after the tomato paste, you got provolone cheese, cellulose, which is a fiber. That's how you get all the fiber in there, probably. Pecorino Romano, corn fiber, so more fiber, sunflower oil, fontina cheese, citrus fiber. So you have citrus fiber, corn fiber, and cellulose as your fibers in this. Then it ends it out with. Uh, Olive oil, sea salt, garlic, pepper, basil, onion, cayenne, yeast, palm oil, baking soda, xanthan, and sunflower oil. Who's doing the review here? So that's the uh, what's up for the Quest pizza. Um, total is 330 calories, 21 grams of fat. 45 milligrams of cholesterol, 1,020 milligrams of sodium, that's 43% of your daily sodium, so there's a lot of salt in this, and like I said, 24 grams of fiber, 18, or 24 grams of carbohydrates, 18 grams of which is fiber, 3 grams of which is sugar, and 27 grams of protein. Um, Vitamin-wise, is 50% of your daily calcium and 20% vitamin C, 8% vitamin A, and 6% iron. Now that, remember that's all for half a pizza. If you're going to eat the whole pizza, double that up. Um, the instructions, you preheat the oven 400, uh, take it out of the package, put it on a baking sheet. It also says uh, for a crisper crust, put the pizza directly on the middle wire rack. Uh, this is the first time that I cooked this, so I don't know, I didn't know how oozy it would be, so I wanted to make sure there was something on it, so I did put it on a baking sheet. And then, last thing, when you take it out of the oven, let it sit for three minutes, which I also did. So that's all the information from the box, and the instructions to how to cook it. Let's go ahead and taste this thing, and see if it actually tastes good. You guys can be the judge whether all that information makes this healthy or not. Uh, it does seem like it is marketed towards the low carb, high fat protein diet. So here's a, what one slice looks like. Let me get this light to hit it better. There the slice. So what the back of it looks like. The back has weird spirally uh, marks on it. And it was like that before I cooked it. I don't know if when they're making these, 
in the factory they're like spiraled out by some uh, machine or whatnot. But let's give this a taste. First of all, it smells like pizza, like cheese pizza. This also comes in pepperoni and supreme, I think. But uh, this was the only flavor that they had the store that I went to. Um, which was Target. Target uh, supplies these. Um, so I don't know if they're like they're really popular or they're just not stocking them well, but this is the only one I can find. Let's give it a taste. part of it, the cheese part. I'm gonna try just the, the crust part. Now, my initial reaction to this while I'm eating this is it just tastes like a frozen pizza. If you were to just make this and put it out on the table without telling me anything about it, I would have just assumed it's a regular pizza. It does have some uh, interesting flavors going on in it, but nothing that would make me feel like there's something odd or strange about this. The sauce and the cheese on top, there's nothing different about it, flavor and texture wise, than other pizzas. The crust has an interesting after flavor um, and an interesting texture. So it is crispy and crunchy, like you want a crust to be. The very top under the sauce absorbs a lot of moisture from the cheese and the sauce. And uh, I don't know if that's because it's made of cheese itself, so it's kind of softer. The bottom is crisp, but it's a very thin layer of crispness. And you get like a real soft, mushy sponge kind of crust over the top of that. And then there's like a there's an aftertaste to this, and you only sense it once you're done chewing and swallowing everything. So like right now, as I'm chewing it, I don't taste that aftertaste. Now I'm done chewing, I've swallowed it all. And there's some lingering, some lingering flavor going on. Almost slightly chemically. It's not like extremely chemically, like I feel like I've poisoned myself. But like there's a some, there's something in the back of my mouth that like I can't explain the flavor besides it's kind of, kind of chemically. You might not even notice it. So, is this pizza good? I would say yes. It tastes fine. If you serve this to me for a meal as a pizza, the cheese one, the pepperoni one, the supreme one, I would think you're just cooking me any store-bought frozen pizza. It is what it is. Um, it's not better or at the top of the frozen pizzas I've had. But it tastes mid-range, like like a tombstone pizza would be. Not as bad as a Jack's, but uh, not as good as a DiGiorno. It's somewhere in the middle. And uh, I guess I would give it a 7.5 out of 10. It is very average in flavor. 
Now the the health the health issue, I don't know how to judge that because I don't do any specific diets. Um try to keep my liquid calories down to a minimum, but that's about the only th really restriction I diet myself with. Um, the uh, the real good food chicken crust pizza, I would say that this is better than that. It tastes more like a real pizza with a real crust. Um, I've been looking, trying to find a cauliflower crust pizza um, that comes frozen. A lot of them that I've found are only partially cauliflower crust, which makes me disappointed because the majority of the crust is still wheat flour. Um, I guess you're getting a little bit better because you're taking some of that out. But if I'm, I'm assuming if that's the kind of thing you wanted to do, if you wanted to have less carbs, so you went with the cauliflower part for the crust, then you probably want the majority of the flour removed. And it just seemed like those still had too much carbs in it to be a low carb option. This one with six net carbs for half a pizza, I don't know like how many grams of carbs each diet really restricts you to, but that six is kind of low because I'm thinking you're probably not going to eat half of this, you're probably going to eat the whole thing. Um, unless you're just snacking, but then you're going to eat other stuff anyway. You guys tell me, if you're a, a low-carb person, if you're doing Atkins or Keto, let me know if this information would be helpful. The Quest Pizza, if you've tried it, let me know. If you have a uh, knowledge of a cauliflower crust pizza that's frozen, that's real, mostly cauliflower crust, let me know as well in the comments. And until then, we're going to have to tell them goodbye, Rudy. Bye.